In this video I'm gonna share my post-processing workflow and also the hardware that I'm using. Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulanto. I'm a photographer and a Lumix ambassador from Helsinki, Finland. I get asked quite often actually, what is my post-processing workflow and what kind of hardware I'm using? And in this video I'm gonna answer that question or those questions. I'm gonna start with my post-processing workflow, which is actually pretty simple, but since you've been asking for it, you're gonna get it. But let me first explain why I keep it so simple. The first reason is, there are two reasons. The first reason is that photography has one unique feature or capability compared to any other art form. And that is the capability to capture a moment in time in a split second. And I like to respect that feature because it's unique to photography. There are paintings and drawings of street scenes, for example, but those are not real-time captions or depictions the same way as a photograph is. Because you can't paint anything in a split second, and even a simple drawing takes at least probably 30 seconds or so. And it also gives me huge satisfaction when I manage to capture a scene where it all comes together. There are all the important visual elements in one scene and I managed to press the uh, shutter at exactly the, rare, at exactly the right moment. And I li also like to respect that and uh, that's also a reason to keep my post-processing simple and true to the moment when I hit the shutter. If I manipulate my image in post, like uh, replacing the sky or, uh, or some other heavy manipulation, it just doesn't give me the same satisfaction as capturing a real, like a real-time, real-life moment in one click. And the second reason to keep my post-processing simple is that I'm a documentarist in my heart and uh, all my photography is uh, more or less documenting what's happening around me. Whether it's street photography or travel photography or whatever, it's documenting what's happening around me. And that's also one reason to keep the post-processing pretty simple and true to the moment when I uh, press the shutter. I'm okay with removing some distracting small items maybe in the corner of the frame or something, but I don't do heavy manipulation in my pictures. But um, it's just me and maybe I'm just a little bit old school here and I, I'm not saying my way is the only way or the right way. And by all means, if you like to do things differently, do whatever makes you happy in your photography. Because I, I think, uh, if you, especially if you're a hobbyist or an amateur, the main thing is that you have fun in your photography. But let's get to that post-processing workflow finally. First of all, I shoot raw 99% of the time because it just gives me a few more options in, in, in post. And uh, I don't shoot that much and that's probably because my background is in film photography a long time ago, but still uh, it, it affects my photography even today. And I don't shoot that much. I don't just uh, spray and pray. I uh, take my time and I usually think a bit before I hit the shutter. And I don't post process all my pictures. I only post process the pictures that I think are keepers. But I have to say that sometimes I think about moving to JPEGs for the sake of simplicity, but so far it has not happened. However, I frequently shoot black and white uh, JPEGs, and I even have a separate video of my black and white uh, settings for Lumix cameras. I'll put the link to that video at the end of this video so you can check it out if you haven't seen it yet. And I really like the process 
And I think it works especially well for black and white because uh, with black and white you don't have to worry about white balance or getting the colors right the same way you have to worry when you shoot uh, color. My post-processing software or application is Lightroom, Adobe Lightroom. And I've been a Lightroom user since the beginning, since the very first beta version. And um, it revolutionized my post-processing workflow and it still works for me. And the actual post-processing starts by importing the photos into Lightroom, of course. But right after the import, I do one very important step. I add keywords to my images. And I can't stress that hard enough. Uh, after some time, when you have collected tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of pictures, you're never going to find anything unless you have your pictures uh, archived and organized. In Lightroom, my pictures are automatically organized by the date, but the keywords help me to find photos that have some specific content. And after I'm done with the keywording part, I select the pictures that I think are worth post-processing. And I rate those pictures with one star. And the actual post-processing, the, the real post-processing starts by fine-tuning the white balance. My Lumix camera's auto white balance usually gets it um, almost right, but I like to fine-tune it uh, to my liking. And the white balance is one of the good reasons to shoot RAW, because uh, JPEG white balance is not nearly as flexible as RAW white balance. And after the white balance, I do the usual things. I add a little bit of contrast, fine tune the highlights and the shadows, and then I place the black and white points where I think they're supposed to be in that particular picture. And uh, that's about it, what comes to the basic adjustments. And sometimes it's also necessary to darken the sky, especially if the sky is uh, a lot brighter than the rest of the, the area in the picture. And it doesn't look very good if the sky is almost blown out or almost white. So by darkening the sky, I can make the picture look more natural and more pleasing. My Lightroom library is on an external SSD drive. And I have two backups of that uh, drive. Just local backups. I have tried some of the cloud-based uh, backup services but so far, the user experience has not been that great. So I've decided to stick with the local backups, uh, for now at least. And then about the hardware I'm using. I'm a Mac user. My very first computer was a Mac. But I used com PC computers also at some point, and I built uh, quite a few PCs for myself. Uh, but then I went back to using Macs because I didn't want to spend time under the hood anymore. I just wanted to use my computers. And now I've been using um, Apple computers for about 20 years. And I'm happy. But I have to say that the current uh, newest operating system called Catalina, it's not uh, Apple's finest uh, operating systems. There are still quite a few small bugs after several months of the, the release, but um, it's manageable, but it's not the best operating system they have created. Anyway, my computer is a 16-inch MacBook Pro. It has 8-core i9 processor and 32 gigabytes of RAM. And the monitor back there is the BenQ SW271. It's a really, really good monitor and I like it a lot. There are many other good monitors, obviously, out there, but this is the one I can recommend from my own experience. And I don't really need a laptop that much. But occasionally I need a laptop and I can't right now justify two computers. So I chose uh, a laptop so I can take it with me if necessary. And that one, it's powerful enough for every photo editing uh, task I have. 
uh, even the big files from the Lumix S1R play smoothly in Lightroom and in Photoshop. And it's also powerful enough for my video editing, but in this video I just want to talk about my photo editing and maybe I'll make another video uh, of my video editing if, if you're interested sometime in the future. And here's the video of my black and white JPEG settings for Lumix cameras. Please take a look if you're interested in black and white photography. Also remember to subscribe and like and all that and also check out my merch. There's a link in the description. Thanks so much and um, I'll see you in the next one.